<laughs> okay, there it is. Got it. Anyhow, Tom, what's new with you, man? Oh, all kinds of wild stuff. We're uh, growing by leaps Shut and bounds. Shut up, animal. And- Nobody can hear you. <laughs> I think he wants us to redo the intro. Yeah. Do the, do the intro. Like to welcome you to the Ernie Moreno and Animal Show. <laughs> and, <there you> go. <laughs> and we our guest today is Tom Chuna, and we're going to ask him a whole bunch of questions. He's going to have a great time. And uh, we got Mario and Michael, and we got Sasha, and we got Ivan, and then we got Rich Rosen who's hiding right now because he's closing another deal. Damn. Mm-hmm. So, so here we go. Leave some for the rest of us. You guys got to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom, tell us a little bit about your background. Oh, let's see here. Well, uh, for about the if last you, eight you years. you speak up, you're kind of hard to hear. Oh, sorry. <laughs> for about the last eight years, I've been uh, an internal recruiter with a uh, holding company. We own and operate uh, plumbing companies, HVAC companies. So I staff all of them, do a lot of internal training. Uh, days pretty much different uh, every day. I also do recruiting for other companies within our franchise family. Could be electricians on the other side of the country, uh, plumbers down in Florida. It's kind of a mixed bag. And previous to that, I was a sole proprietor of my own recruiting firm uh, before there was an internet from about the mid 90s to uh, uh, early 2000s, where I specialized. Yeah, congratulations. Can you hear me now? Yep, yeah, better. finally. Everybody oh say no. Yeah, no. well, I switched. I switched. I I'm not using him. the mic anymore. What? Okay. <laughs> hearing aid. Hey, everybody. It's the Recruiting Animal Show. Okay. And what's the hey, date? Hey, Tom. March. I'm curious. Pre-internet, how are you getting your uh Was there a world before resume? the internet? Let me no. start the show. No. Okay. Hey, I'm going to cut this one. part out. Okay. You guys have to <laughs> listen to me now. Okay. You're doing so well. Hey, everybody. Recruiting Animal here on March 2nd, 2023. He always Isn't says it? he's going to edit something out. It's and only never 2022. Does. What's <laughs> happened to me? I, I, I got a, a lot of people here and I got a guest, Tom Chuna. But first, I actually, I, I just want to say that I am more important than super rich Rosen. Because I got, look what I got. Well, you can't see it. <laughs> I got a t-shirt from video, Hire video Tool. Animal, you're on video. Yeah, Hire, Hire Tool. Easy. Hire Easy. easy. I got a t-shirt. Animals easy. That was okay. They only sent you that because they never paid you what they owed you. Yeah, they never paid me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> crap. Uh, and hi, I got a, a, a mug and I got uh, some kind of thing. You don't have to touch your keys. Uh, and uh, I, got a, <laughs> I got a pen. Talk about pre-internet. I never use pens anymore. Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, everything. Uh, hey, and people who are listening, Thank I've you. been struggling for the last 45 minutes with my technology. It's not really uh, working. Okay. And so these guys thought they were going to do the show without me today. I, I, and you know yeah. what? I mean, like, if you think it's going to be better, I don't <laughs> care. I'm willing to take a back seat. Mike's got more pens than me. Mike has more pens. I, I still have my signing pen from when I was in sales with Gartner. Look at that. Congratulations. Tiffany. Okay. So Tom Chuna, raise people your can... hand. Tom Chuna, you're the yes. guest. Okay. Raise your hand so people know who you are. They might Woo! think you're, uh, you know, this girl in the center. Okay. <laughs> Tom was telling, he was telling Ernie <clears throat> that he recruits HVAC people. Am I right about that? Yes. And plumbers and electricians. Okay. Yeah, could have used your help on some HVAC uh, positions a few months ago. Yeah, congratulations. That's history. Okay. And you do it for a <laughs> number for a number of contractors. You've got a group of contractors that you recruit for, right? Yeah, part of our franchise family, yes. Okay. And you're a martial artist and, and that stuff too, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Does that okay. mean like you, you draw Asian kind of things or oh, Michael, that's almost racist. You're that's totally racist. Asian. Hey, come on, martial arts are not just based out of Asia. <laughs> yeah, it is. No, it is not. You have martial martial arts in Sparta all over the world, for God's sake. Okay. okay. No, but where did Philippines, it start? Indonesia? Okay. No. okay, hold on. Okay, you know, I got this weird... Sorry, I had this schedule. There's a, a been... Uh, and and maybe, maybe Sasha can tell us about this. There's been a slew of postings about uh, recruiters who are doing Zoom interviews, and uh, a little kid comes in and says, Dad, I shipped my pants. Oh, <laughs> awesome. I love that. <laughs> I poop. 
That's awesome. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I haven't it. saw that one. I haven't saw yeah, that one. I'm There's been more than one. But you've got a little oh. kid. I thought maybe that that would happen. With no, you never had that, eh? <laughs> no, no, no. You're okay, well, what? What I've should had, I've had my kids show up in my in my <laughs> videos that I'm sending to candidates that I can't get a hold of through other means. And you let and you don't re-record. You leave the kids in there. I'm, I'm much like the recruiting animal who says he's always going to edit something and never does. OK, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. But nobody's got comments on that or anything like that. OK, right. It happens. Yeah, okay. I did a screening call with a girl that was uh, potty training her, her daughter. <laughs> So while you were on the screen call, really? Wow. OK, well, I heard uh, somebody said she was interviewing uh, somebody, a marketing executive, and uh, the candidate was it seemed to be taking a bath <laughs> with, with, with her phone. <laughs> that's a, that's okay. an interview. OK, OK. Well, and know, here's this market, I'm just happy that they'll, they'll answer the phone and be on the damn call to begin with. I don't care. Yeah, OK, here, here was a profound question that uh, Tom actually took the time to answer. You know, I have to tell you something. They have this option. I told you I was fiddling around with what the settings the and it says <laughs> mirror. What the hell is that, Rich? <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> what's, what's going on? Am, am hey, I missing I something? I, I sent you. A, I sent it to you as well, so you could. There's a review. in the chat. No, it's, we don't see nothing. Like, oh, sorry. Okay, well, you're not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't for us, apparently. But the quick thing, there, there's ready. actually a guy out there who takes. He like through the pandemic, he started taking Zoom interviews, and he would always do the Zoom interviews like at the drive-through of McDonald's. And then completely deny that he was at the at the and he would just like stay in character. He's hilarious. A, he was yeah, awesome. I, I <laughs> saw I saw that guy. I saw I, actually I had a similar experience when I was interviewing a candidate for like a top management position. Uh, she was uh, we were she started the interview in her car, and then after like ten or fifteen minutes, she went with her phone into the restaurant and ordered a salad and I was like I was speechless I I mean it's it was definitely her first and last time so yeah I ended up the meeting immediately apparently this is this pooping your pants during an interview is a thing even even Al Roker pooped his pants at the White House it says <laughs> Oh, that I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, I I, in, fact, in fact, that I didn't want to know. But wait a second. <laughs> All I've got to say is you can't poop your pants if you're not wearing any. I'm going to leave it. There you there. go. Okay. Yeah. Well a Andy, Andy, are you calling from the Ukraine? Yep, exactly. Wow. From, from hell. Wow. Yeah. Are you where? What hey, city? Man. What city are you in? Kiev, Kiev? Kiev in the capital. We're, we're getting wow. bombed on a daily basis. <laughs> Dude, you are a dedicated listener. Wow. Holy <laughs> shit. I hope you guys are all right. No, wow! Actually, no, just is there anything you want to tell us? Somebody, that's it. <laughs> wow. Is there anything we should know that you want to tell us that we haven't read or heard yet? I heard this is a social media war, but this is a, it's, amazing. Yeah, it's it, it's super close to truth. So basically, not nothing to add. <laughs> How come you're not in the army? Because um, helping the army by okay, uh, you know what? I shouldn't. I, I was. I shouldn't say something <clears throat> like that. Yeah, that's not nice of me. Any anybody else want to ask about the war? I mean, it's uh, yeah, like, a what's, yeah. What's going on? Like, what's the real story over there? I mean, you watch the news; it looks horrifying. It depends on yes, what news you watch. The war, the war is happening. The war is here. Uh, there's this conflict. Uh, it's hugely, massively uh, affected the Ukrainian citizens. Uh, I I do not know how how does it affect on the Russian citizens. I just see what is happening in my country. Uh, we currently have high spirits, high patriotic spirits. This is the first time within our 30 years of independence where everyone is very patriotic. Everybody wants to defend their land. And I think that we'll make history. Really? You do, eh? I don't know how you can beat them. There's the, Russia's a big country with a huge army. It's just a, it's not that it's simple. Not a really I'm like a okay. bumbling giant right now. Though. Yeah. That, so that army is getting his ass whooped by a bunch of farmers and whatnot. So congratulations on that. But yeah, that's crazy. It's, uh, the dangerous part of that is like this. 
he, he's going to get desperate and do some really big things, which is very Bingo. scary. Really? You think so? In front he of the whole world? He's getting backed into a corner. In front of the whole world. He doesn't give yeah, a shit but, about the rest but, of the world. Oh, yeah, that's true. Andy, so all of, you, all of your family is fine? Sorry? All of your family, are they, everybody's okay? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's okay. Can I ask you, like, why, what made you stay, like, stay in the city? Like, why not get to the shelters or get out or? Um, <clears throat> because uh, I, I have uh, a, some particular reasons for it within the family. So I have to stay with my family here and protect my family. I didn't got leave. Kids. You have a little kid, right? Wow. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Good okay, well, all we can do is wish you well, and I'm glad you're here. Oh. Okay, I mean, yeah. I'm happy to see you, but I don't know if I should be happy because you're in, in that kind of situation. Can I, okay. wait, can I ask you a question? I mean, <laughs> wait, can I ask you? you people, like, How are you doing, guys? Like, it seems like people are still working at the grocery stores and doing what they got to do. Like, just... Yeah, I mean, actually, our office is recruiting. We're, we're still continuing to recruit, but also we are helping the people that are leaving Ukraine to integrate in the society, for example, in Poland. Uh, together with one of the biggest sites in Poland, Pitsui PL, we started jointly uh, investing our efforts into placing people that have left Ukraine and could uh, start working and start integrating the society vastly. So basically, wow. we're, we're also doing this. Wow, 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 wow. Good for you, man. That's okay. Awesome. Okay. Tommy, I, he, he's been commenting a, a, a lot lately. And this... Uh, woman she had two um candidates uh leave this company in the first year and the company dumped her and tom i think said don't worry about it walk away from these people it's them not you right is that what you said tom that is what i said At some point, she was he... feeling it was her responsibility she was recruiting people who were really not that great candidates and it was proved by the lack of retention you said no 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 dear don't look in the mirror they should look in the mirror is that right yeah their onboarding probably sucks or maybe they have a toxic culture <clears throat> anybody what? else want to talk about that you got two candidates you place them and they leave within the year at the same company. Anybody? Anybody? What does that tell you? That you're at fault or the company? Anybody want the to talk to that? The company's at fault. Simple as that. <laughs> and would you tell them that? Why not? If you're going to walk away, give them hell and walk. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's, here's a related question. Walking, she's walking for them. It's she, not that she's, she needs, a, she's going to make them a client. She needs to worry about what she can control. And that's it. Yeah, you're not Don't really worry about anything things. else. You have no control over people leaving after you've satisfied all your requirements. What's she going to do? Sure. Give them back their money? I don't think so. <laughs> you yeah, know, I think... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Maybe, maybe it's one try person, and assume a bit more responsibility. Let's say it's not her fault. But like, kind of like Ernie said, try and control what you can. And maybe she should look at herself and, and consider the, the caliber of candidates that she was submitting. But... You also have to take into account, maybe she submits 10 terrible candidates. And, and what that does is they're selecting what they believe is the least terrible of those 10 candidates. And, and they still have a responsibility in this because they made that selection. But if she's trying to control for her participation in this or her, her you know what there was a shorter this. way to say that michael g cox she might be sending them lousy candidates without that speech you could have put it that wait, wait. that simply if okay well, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit more than that how do you if you send lousy candidates and they hire them how is that really the recruiter's fault yeah Exactly. Oh, oh, no, I'm going to get a That's young crazy. person, no, wait, wait, half wait, your wait, age, is going to spank wait, wait. you so <laughs> rich. She's going to teach you a lesson. No, wait, Go ahead, wait, wait, Sasha. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, so my question. question. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, hold wait. on. So if, you're, if you drive a car off the dealership's lot and you get in an accident, is that the dealer's fault too? You know what? This isn't I mean, about cars, okay? This is not about cars. <laughs> not about people. Ahead. It's about morals. That was a crazy one. I think it is. Exactly. <laughs> he wasn't using his drug examples. Go ahead. 
And oh, how come? Go ahead. How, how come? I mean, how you can know uh, when you sign a contract with a specific company, and when you actually choose to be a recruiter for a specific company that they are not a lousy company, uh, a company that will overpromise, underdeliver, company that doesn't know how to lead their internal infrastructure, uh, who won't make, uh, won't be. Uh, aware that they are people the people in the company are the biggest asset that they have that could be a possibility as well how do you know that the company that you signed a contract with is not l running their business lousy okay here's the thing i, I, I think it's your personality hold on your animal hold on money that's my take they left what is it? money and a better job nothing you can do about that if there is know. something that you can control in this, maybe look at that, you know, look at yourself and see if you can step it up a little bit. I'm OK with that. And also totally OK with what Rich said, which is they made a decision to hire somebody that maybe they didn't like to, you know, in the end. They, now, they hired for desperation. That's not my problem. My job is to introduce talent to them, not to do retention not to hold their hand. We don't set any parameters. We don't set the client list. We don't set the culture. We don't set the comp. We don't set Jack. Get him, Rich. So, Get him. You know, at the end of the Here's day. Here's another thing. You, you, if, you, if you have any kind of a premium hmm. account on LinkedIn, you can take a quick look at the, the uh, total employee count and see how much that has grown or gone down in the past six months, 12 months, two years. And if you see that, that that's down this one is down 18% in the past six months. Maybe take that as some sort of a sign. Will you ask the client, will you go to the client and ask, say, look, I've seen this uh, on, on, uh, on LinkedIn. Something's Median wrong with tenure your tenure is 8.8, I'm sorry, eight months. And, and you have to ask. Will you go back to the client and say, is there something wait, 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 wait. wrong with your company? I don't no, want no, to know. No, 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 no. You, you place these people, right? Yeah. If you place them, Pick up the phone and call the people and say, why the heck did you leave? Yes. With that information, you go back and you tell them they left because they got this or they got that. Yeah, but Don't both, both sides end up lying about it. But the candidate Wait, lies I about it. The, the client lies about it. So at the end of the day is, you know what? You can get the information. You make your best judgment and decide, is this company worth doing? I, I had a client that um, they hired early last year. The two people I hired, they hired five guys for me, two left. And... They're like, hey, you got to replace them. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, if in this case, I'm like, fine. It was in the warranty period. But, you know, it would, the end of the day is it's not a bad company. There was various reasons why one left. And, you know, you got to make a judgment call, but it's not always black and white. And then you got to also see what's the real ramifications of it. Is it is there some jackass manager? Is it the bad culture? And, and what's the long-term, you know, mon monetary gain by working with these companies? You know, you can't just cut them off because you had a bad hire or even two, you know, you got to know the whole story. From well, the sides. fact I, there were two I, candidates told me that, that there's a symptom, there's something wrong in that culture. And if you want to guarantee buy a set of crafts and tools, yeah. you know, everything's buyer beware. Well, that's why I, I, these companies that always want these 60 day, 120 day, you know, six month guarantees. I don't understand why any recruiter gives them. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, I tell a client flat out, I give you 30 days just because of courtesy, not because I want to. <laughs> and it's you know i'm like the end of the day is like you're making the decision i go back to the car example you buy the car you drive it off the lot and something goes wrong is it my fault you know not really there i have go. a question uh mm -hmm. this person who posted this or mentioned this is she an internal recruiter or working as a external external okay. external Okay. okay, so this is a, a really important issue, uh, and I want to get back to Sasha's question related to it about how can you discern in advance uh, that there, you know, it might be something wrong. Michael G. Cox gave us an interesting clue. First, I want to check with Kiev. Do you have anything to say? I know you're a quiet guy. I have to check yeah, in on the, you the, and the, Ivan the to see if you... my, the case that Michael G. Cox actually gave it. It's it, it makes sense absolutely. Like to see like what what is the how, how long does the candidate work within the organization? Like that's super super relevant to the case. I I, I think I, I'd be using that. It's it seems obvious, but I, I didn't actually take it take it that deep. And and do you, would you go back to the hiring manager? You say, look, you know, we had this conversation. You may said it's a great place, but I I now I've looked at the, in fact even before. 
before you even call him, maybe you've checked that out and, and you throw it in his face. Do you do that? Hey, if this company's so great, how come everybody's only <laughs> staying eight throw months? Throw it in his face. Well, that's Nobody's what you're gonna doing. Throw it in his that's face. what you're doing. I don't care how much you soften no, the blow, no. but you're look, saying, look, I, you got a problem, hide these mister. From a candidate and, mister. you know, Mr. Recruiting Animal, listen. I'm not going to hide these things from the candidate. And I want to make sure I'm able to address this and also get a better understanding for what's going on within your organization, because I'm kind of representing your organization to a certain extent in the market. So help me to understand why it is that headcount has gone up by 36%, but your tenure is under one year. You're adding a bunch of people, but they're all leaving What's a year? wrong with your lousy company? That's the question you're asking. Am I right, Michael G. Cox? I wouldn't use those words, but yes, I, that's okay. what animals should say. Yeah, the animals should say that. Yeah, that's what that's what Sasha would say. Sasha's a tough cookie. <laughs> Sasha's a tough cookie. Okay, that's right. She she's <laughs> clearly. An evil individual. I told you she looks like Gal Gadot, and she did wear her hair nice and long like today, but no crown. Okay, <laughs> Ivan, Ivan, another quiet. Next time I'm going to put a crown. Thank okay. you. Uh, uh, What's your take on this, Ivan? You. Okay, the two <laughs> quiet guys are in the corner. Explain to like a candidate. This is like a non-compete, and like I have to explain. I'm writing an SMS to this candidate, like about this non-compete clause, man. I'm closing a deal here on my phone. Hey, well, I won't. Okay, I won't bug you if you don't have anything to say. You don't have to. I just wanted to give you a chance because you're polite, <laughs> like Andy. Okay. Um, so hold on a second. Okay, so Michael G. Cox says, look at the tenure. How many people are there? And make sure you ask about that. Take that into, when you're asking the company, take that into consideration. Okay, that's our big fact so far for today. Um, but, you know, there was another woman who said that uh, she placed- You just didn't like the way I used words to convey I liked it. No, no, I liked it. I liked, it. I liked it, Michael G. Cox. I'm like Andy. I, I, I didn't think of it. And I thought it, it's a smart, smart thing to do. But um, yeah, it seems like there's a division based on personality. Like you've got guys like Super Rich and Tom who say, hey, it's not my job, man. Okay. Once, once you hire- I'm out of here. I'm not responsible. And there's people like me who think that retention is the responsibility of the recruiter. There's something wrong. I, so how I, I feel that way. Is why, is, why is retention? How are you going to affect? Yeah. How is retention your responsibility? What are you? If you place the right people, if you gave them the right people, and they made the selection from Bullshit. your people. Bullshit. And you what place them you under have? an asshole manager. Yeah. Well, all right. So you, is I that my the, fault? I place the perfect guy. All right. I didn't pick him, but I introduced the perfect guy because we don't place none of us hire anyone. We introduce the right people. They choose from your slate of candidates or even the one person you gave them. So oh, yeah. I introduce I, you to a girl, you marry her and she's terrible. I, right. I, oh, it's not I my fault. I didn't tell you to marry yeah, her. Right. That's an right. example. Animal. You, you got to grow a set and then, then you say, you no, I'm not going to go out with you. <laughs> right? yeah. I mean, that's all you have to do. Wait, wait, when do they start issuing crystal balls when you graduate recruiter school? Yeah. That's what I want. Apparently Mike's got crystal balls. You know what? He's very fragile. Very fragile crystal balls. <laughs> you need to be more like the president of Ukraine, big giant ones, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I agree with that one. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, actually, let's ask Andy. Is 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 he well uh, liked at the present time? Like we're getting a he's getting fantastic publicity over here, Zelensky. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like every everyone uh, completely admires him, respects him, and uh, fine. Like there's the saying that finally, within these thirty years of independence, we have a president with balls. Like basically, yeah. this. But he might not live. That's the question. Uh, yeah, horrible. That's, yeah, that's the, suicide the, gang. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But they got so Biden offering him a way out instead of hey, we're going to send people. Look, look give you a ride out. What okay. did he say? I don't need a ride. Yeah. Yeah. I need exactly. guns. Good for him. I need How guns. About Vitali Klitschko, man, yeah. he's out there. Okay, yeah. hold on. Let me get back to this. I want to get back to Sasha's question because it's really important. Uh, so you guys are saying. You know, it's not, I place the people, you know, you choose them. That's your problem. But she asked the question, is there any way to determine, you know, if this is going to, this is going to work? You guys are saying there's no way for you to know. No. You don't have a crystal ball. 
There's yeah. no way for you to know if uh, this is going to be good, right? Yeah. Yeah, but, you, know, you, you, you know, because you know your industry, you know what companies are good or bad. You do your best assessment, you know? I you don't know. know. I've, I've presented you, you can know. Tom, I, you know, I'm not giving you enough time, but you'll come back again. But I, I've, I've, placed, <laughs> I've I presented people and I say, this person is fantastic. You're going to love her. It's a great match because I really believe it. Okay. Am yeah. I just shooting in the dark? That's what you guys are saying. Yeah, I don't yes, have any way of yes, knowing if it's true. That's yes, not at are. all. You, no, it's not. That's not true because you know your space. You you screen the the person just like you screen the company. You do a discovery call. You find out what are these people like. What what's their what's the culture like? How do they hire? You know what's the turnover rate? Why is the role open? I mean, normal simple questions if you're doing your job. And then, Rich talking out of both sides of his mouth. He's saying yes, <laughs> yes, I can tell if it's a good fit. But if it doesn't work out, how would I know? It's not my responsibility. You're right, Isn't it's that not what's Totally different things. That is totally different. If you're different. a placement in, then you can, you can make an educated guess about what's going to work or not. Your first so, one or two, you're kind of guessing, but time and distance, that, and that's like we were talking, that's one of the advantages of maybe being a specialist. You're deep in your industry, deep with the customer, then you can be a little more accurate. So, Animal, according to you, if I send a candidate, they should just hire whoever I say to hire, Right. Sometimes I think they should. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but they don't. <laughs> they don't do it, though. And no matter what you say, they're not really taking your opinion. Most clients don't. Maybe they listen. Maybe they don't. Re end of the day is they're hiring who they want to hire, not who you want to hire 99% of the time. I can't believe there's lots of hot hiring managers who don't hate you, Rich, when they, you know, they do. hear you talk. Right. They like the honest truth. Every, not, all the bullshit pussies floating around that you guys are doing doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah, I tell them this is what I like. This is what I don't like. I'm very honest with them. There's no guessing. Do you use a car example? I do. <laughs> the guy I did it yesterday. The guy's like, "We're not buying cars," and I'm like, "Well, you know what? Maybe we're not the right work for fit for you then." Because <laughs> I'm like, either you get it or you don't. I mean, it's yeah. the same. Yeah. Rich can say, "Look, I made." Analogies. <laughs> Rich yeah. can say, "Look, I made 60, 60, 60 hires last year. You're not interested. I don't need you." Okay, yeah, he's, yeah. he's got that luxury. Anybody else want to comment on this? No, move on to the next one. No, no, I think this is really good. Sasha, did you learn anything so far about, about yes. your question? Yes, I actually did. I... You have a follow-up? We lost you. We can't hear you. We're I muted you. myself. It, it's a uh, default not... thing that I do when <laughs> I'm not how to talking. Mute <laughs> yeah, thank you. I have an option here. But... <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I did. And uh, however, Rich mentioned something interesting. And uh, I believe I would um, make the analogy of dating when you are closing a contract with the company, right? How do you know that the company that you're going to send the recruiters is the right the company, right? So and Rich, uh, Rich mentioned that he's doing a screen call. Uh, to find out a bit more about the company. But isn't that a bit challenging when you're doing like the, the first uh, first call or first introductory call or, or no. you're trying your luck as... You, you got to ask, all the, you have to ask, the, you have to have a list of questions that you're going to go through that you're going to understand what these guys are all about. And then, you know, as you're, if you're a specialist, like I don't understand how anyone's a generalist because... You, you just, it's a whole nother conversation about a waste of time, but you just can't, you're not that deep. If you're in a, if you're in a niche or a niche, as Mike likes to say, animal likes to say, you understand, you can really understand who and what your clients are about. You can say this, this is what makes the, you know, this is what people are saying about it in the industry. You know, I mean, cause you don't, as a recruiter, you don't want to work on a company that's got a lousy reputation just for a quick buck because these candidates lose respect whoa, for you. Whoa, and next whoa. time you call, they're not going to call. They're not going to take. He your said, call. "Buck, buck, <laughs> like the like the deer." Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but this oh, other this. girl, uh, this uh, Tom commented in uh, Antonella right below him. She said, "I sent someone in." Uh, here's what she said. Uh, let me. Okay. Uh, she said, make sure the selling points of the client company are real. I placed a C-level candidate. And after three months, he revealed, he told me that nothing that they told him on the job was true. Okay. Yeah. He said, here, well, here was the interesting thing. The hiring manager wanted him to bring in change, but there was old management 
more senior than that, that hiring manager who didn't really want change. And he didn't find that out. Is that the recruiter's fault that no, that wasn't exposed? That's the company's fault. I actually have a line in my contract that basically states if the, the discovery information in the discovery call isn't the same as the material, as the material difference in the reality, once the candidate's placed, we're not responsible. So there's no way for the recruiter to discern if there's a, a con conflict the within the company. Lie to you. He's going to lie to you. Okay. Yeah, but look, what it's like if you have like this, but with the candidate, right? Like they like take your client's offer, but then they get an offer from like a big tech company for like a lot more money and they leave after like 29 days. And then the client has to pay your full fee. What do you do? That's a business decision. You got to decide, hey, is it, is it a company I want to stay doing business with or, or not? You know, yeah, I let's mean, say it's a clear the cut, contracts, the, like the, the, the contracts the are, hang, 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 on, hang on, hang on. The contracts are a gray area. <laughs> Because you got to decide, do you want to do business with this company? Just because it says you're not doing this happened, you can do the right thing and help them out. Or you just you go say, this is the letter of the law. And, you know, we, they, you'll say, fine, we'll pay you, but we'll never work with you again. You got to decide if you like the client or not, how much you want to put up with. And that's, so I mean, how would you solve the situation? Like, how would you like, would you like replace fully or partly or how would you do that? Again, it depends. Like I, I did a deal, I signed an agreement yesterday. I told him, listen, you know, he was all concerned if they person that happened because they had it happen. He, you know, I said, listen, I mean, if the guy leaves day 35 and it's a 30 day agreement, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll either replace it. If we've got someone on our desk, we got to do a deeper dive search. Maybe we'll, we'll give you a, a pretty significant discount or whatever, but we got to see as time arises and what happens if someone leaves because this, this is a total, you know, you know, crap show, then, you know, good luck to them. But if they leave for reality, like real reasons, like you said, maybe like I had, I had a candidate, he left, you know, after like a week or two, because he got literally a guaranteed $2 million offer. I mean, even the client's like, hell, you got to take it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I mean, we ended up making that, we ended up making into a retainer. I said, listen, pay me 10 grand up front. They hadn't paid me yet. So I'm like, just pay me 10 grand and we'll use it as a retainer and we'll redo the search. We ended up not finding the right person because it was a ridiculously hard search, but the guy was so appreciative. He ended up connecting us to his VC. The VC ended up, we ended up doing about three or four deals with his VC firm. They even ended up paying us for that full deal once they did fill that role, because technically, according to the contract, we wrote the money. I didn't even ask him for it. You know, so sometimes you just got to do what's right. Yeah, I let, I'm letting Rich talk. I'm letting Rich talk because that's going to give a higher rating to the <laughs> Ernie, it's go ahead. Shoot. That'll get you it's more of those like, unspa like unpaid right sponsors. There you yeah. go. <laughs> it's all about relationships and, and your yeah. relationship to 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 your client. And and to also understand that you can get more clients. If you know if that client doesn't work out, find another one. They yep. come and they go. They're kind of like your best friends in high school. They're not your best friends in life. And that's clients. They I, change I still have time. my high school friends. I did too. So sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, I you know, not all of them. Not but, all I mean, of them. You don't hang out with the whole gang. I do. I, I, before, I, I <laughs> well, thought we lost on I want to ask. You're right. You're right. Exactly. You're right. You but listen, before, before Donna leaves again, I want to ask her if she's got something to say. She's been so quiet. Okay. We'll bangs. come back to Ernie in a second. Donna, do you have something? Bangs are back. With the bangs are back. Yeah. Bangs are back. Yes, I did it for the animal. I love it. <laughs> it's sexy. Okay. Is am I allowed oh, to say boy. that? It turns me on. I've been watching. Oh, oh boy. Edit that out. <laughs> There's a good show. No, no. On Netflix, on Netflix, I'm watching Bombshell. That's pretty good. Anybody oh, anybody see, seen it? Yeah, I like okay. Bombshell. Do you have something you want to say? Sexy um, bangs. Oh, yeah. That's that's my new that's gonna be my new Facebook name now. Forget Donna <laughs> Donna Bobana. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, all, all of what you're saying is, I, I get it. I, as far as knowing if the if the role is real, I'm worried about that with one we're filling right now because it's a it's a client who says they want to bring in a young person, you know, someone new to bring in change and shake things up. And I'm like, I don't want to fill that because I don't buy it. I don't buy that they're going to have this young person come in where there's a bunch of old people. I mean, no offense, I'm one of the old people now, but you know, that are in <laughs> place and that it's really going to work and be effective. You know, I mean, I can't really, I don't, I don't believe it. So I'm not, 
I'm not really actively trying. The exact same issue we were just talking about then, right? right that's, I, that's I just have to note something with all this ageism and sexism. We right. also spent half a show talking about super riches pecs, okay? So it's not just like I'm picking on the women here, right? Okay. What? <laughs> We did. Okay. Uh, uh, Ivan said he's got to lift more uh, do bench presses so he's not intimidated I, uh, by, by Rich. That's my only dream. That's like, uh, even like, you know, with Rich Rosen, go to the gym, like the dumbbells, put the dumbbells in. It's like, it's be Better so be amazing. Careful, I'm dreaming of it every Dr. time. Ernie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ernie, finish up. Yeah, I interrupted Ernie to give No, 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 no. I mean, you guys, it's, it's all going good. I'm just, as I listen to all of this, I still say that you got to know your client well enough that they can talk to you and they can tell you what the atmosphere is. And I'm telling you, some of those things are like, you know, it's even like, like Donna said, you know, like they want a young person. Well, tell me what you want. It's order. Tell me if you want an old person or a young person, it's all illegal in hell, but I don't want to waste my time. And I, I use that experience because a lot of times I recruit in the South and they do not want a person of color. And they You're tell kidding. you that's the atmosphere. You're kidding. No, no, no. You know, you know, you all you gotta do is when you look at one of those places in the south, you find this, you find a a, a um I, I usually run something like I'll, I'll put the name of the town and then I'll put KKK. Watch what you say, Ernie. I don't want you to, no, to no, say no, something bad, that, okay? No, no, I'm saying that what I'm saying is you get an atmosphere of, of where it's at. You you, you can't travel America and be a person of color and pretend like everything is great. You know, I, I, I watch out. I tell my kids, watch where you're going and be careful because you're the only little Mexican kid in that car. And, <laughs> and, but what I'm saying is it exists in, Cal in, in the United States. The reality is whether it's color or whether it's what they want, they got to talk to you. But here's let me let me raise something uh, another issue though that Donna just referred to and I re referred to as well. If they say you know oh yeah we want someone to bring in change, you can almost always guarantee that that's not tr true, is isn't it? Am I am I right about that? You and you can challenge them on that. Say who wants change? Is there some people who don't want change in there? Tom, do you want to address that? Yeah, I think a lot of it that that's a disguise for they want to hire somebody that they can use as a scapegoat. When nobody cooperates, they'll say, oh, you're the new thing, you're out. That's what they'll do. Yeah. And, and, and really, when it comes to change, isn't that the president's job? Right. Why do they need to bring in like a young person to do what all the leadership hasn't been able to do? Like, that's where I'm like, mm, I don't want to work that. Yeah. Mm hmm. It all, it all depends on the size. But, but the thing, but the thing is, if you're working a point. startup, it's different than if you're working at a, you know, a big established yeah. company. But, but the point of it is you're listening to what they're saying and you make your own decisions going forward. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, unless you're like Donna, not to, not to pick on you. But if, if you're on an, if you're at an agency mm -hmm. and they give you an account to work or they tell, give you an order to fill and it, you've got your little codes in the agency world that, that read something like uh, young, if vibrant, all those codes that are being used to employ ageism. How do you get around that? You know. Well, I sent my boss a couple of candidates who were a little bit too old, and uh, <laughs> who could actually do the job. And he presented he presented both of them, and they have refused to see either one of them. So like, but I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to send someone there to be slaughtered. And, uh, you know, if I start to believe it, then maybe, but, um, you know. You know, we got to watch what we say on the show. If we're too frank about certain things, I don't know. I've got a feel, feeling we can get in trouble. I mean, so I'm sorry to say it, but uh, it's true. Um, like it's, somebody's going to see this. You yeah, know, well, that's the, the guarantee. Let's see if I want to do it. The, the I was people that are going to watch this I in have, the next I year. Have, I had a lot of trouble getting the if, if if I get to cut this out, people won't know. I had a lot of trouble getting onto the 
show today. But I was going to start off with an ad, but my uh, and this is the ad. Michael G. Cox just gave me the segue. Hey, everybody, we like guests on the show, okay? And if you want, there she walks. So the guest walks out when uh, I, I say we like guests, okay? But anyway, here's the thing: you can say a lot of stupid things here, and no one's ever going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever going to hear it. Michael G. Cox just delivered the, the message. We could say almost anything. It's a anything, safe place okay? to share. That's why yeah, there's always uh, two sides to every coin. You could have a show with Rich that everybody watches, okay? Or you could have a show like this, which nobody watches, but you're more free, okay? You don't have to worry so much that, you know, you're going to get nailed for, you know, talking about ageism or something like that. Does anybody want to say anything? Let me introduce you. Yeah, I, I, okay. I got something to say animal. You need to rename it the recruiting animal therapy show. That's the correct <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's actually correct, yeah. That's a good, that's a good thing. MarioTheRecruiter.com, raise your hand. Ernie, raise your hand. Ernie tell Ernie thinks that he's wearing a black t-shirt. I gotta tell, I gotta tell you. So when he starts talking about yeah. color, maybe uh, he's uh, on the wrong page. <laughs> Foodindustryrecruiter.com. Tom Chuna, the guest, <laughs> the nominal guest. He's an old friend. Do you have a, a website you want to promote, Tom, or anything like that? Uh, no, just my LinkedIn page. You can find you can find me there. I'm the only one. Tom T O M Chuna C H U N A Tom. Tuna the tuna. Okay, yep. Sasha. Fish, baby. Sasha, raise your hand. She's our new friend. Gal Gadot. Hello. Okay. Hello. The, the salesrecruiter.com. Michael G. Cox, you're wearing a purple shirt or it just looks blue. Ivan Clang.so. He's the IT recruiter who built his own ATS. Check it out. Rich Rosen, super rich. <laughs> Cornerstonesearch.com. Andy, tell us what you do again, okay? Okay. Uh, the, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I have been investing all my time and efforts in. This is a job platform for migrant workforce. Uh, we have started last year in Auten, and now we're working like throughout the European region and also the Eastern European region to the extent that we can in terms of uh, the hiring process now. I'm so we freaked out with... that he's here. This guy is, is calling in from Kiev, okay? How what's is your... he so calm? That's what I yeah, want Yeah, that's, that's it. What's your, <laughs> what's your domain name? Uh, yeah. Jabian.com. Spell it. -N what? Jabian. Stop interrupting him. God damn it. <laughs> Jabian.com. That's Jab you, Jobin? Is that what you're always talking about, Rich? That's his, his site? You're not, are you Joe? You're not Jobin. J O B. The different oh. animal. That's a different uh, tool. This is a website. Com. Go Biden. Is that it? Jobian. Go Biden. Go Biden. No, yeah. And Donna, Donna. It, yeah. I, you know. Okay. It's it's Donna. It's not Donna Terrell, like I think it is. It's Donna right. Terrell. Am I right? You're right. Correct. Okay. Okay. I'll learn. You're something. welcome, animal. Who's By got way, a topic? Uh, Who wants to talk? I just want. I just want to point out one thing. Could everyone just tell us where your location is? Because this is a pretty unique group. I mean, we're from all over the world. Start with Tom. He's in the corner. Yeah, Cleveland, Ohio. Toronto. I Ernie. Chicago. Mario doesn't want to say. DC. Okay. <laughs> Sasha. Sasha. Navi Sad, Serbia, Europe. Wow. It's Europe. <laughs> Michael T. Cox, you're next. <laughs> Texas, baby, and and usually Mexico also. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's going across. He's going. Everybody's coming to the states. He's going the other way. <laughs> Ivan's in Zurich, right? We gotta have Lynn? options. Yes. There you go. Super rich. Boston. We know that Andy is in uh, Kiev, and uh, Don is in somewhere in Florida, right? Yeah, near Tampa, outside Tampa. Okay, you happy I'm now, Ernie? No, I'm happy. I, do. I think it's okay. something that should be uh, recognized. Right, right. Cool. okay. And, and uh, anybody want to say something? Anybody got, uh, you know, anybody? Anybody? Mario, got something you want to say? Andy? I'm so glad now many people don't watch this show. <laughs> okay, <laughs> me too. Now I am too. I got something to feel good about. And I still got these presents from uh, Hire Tool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That Nobody, I got tons. Of, I got tons of stuff because Tom, Tom. Well, for instance, here's another one Tom took up this week. Okay, the candidate ghosts the interview, right? 
She it's goes to the recruiter. The recruiter program. sets up an interview. The candidate say, arranges, <laughs> agrees to it, doesn't show up. And then, uh, oh, oh, this, it, was it the candidate didn't show up with the company, I think, screwed it up. Then later on, the candidate calls another recruiter at the same company. And she wanted to, this, this the original poster wanted to know, what should I say to that candidate? Tom, do you remember what you said? Oh, yeah, just uh, mark it in the ATS and pretend they died. Yeah, she's dead to me. <laughs> she's dead <laughs> to me. Is that your rule? If, if the candidate does something you don't like, they're dead? Yeah, you've got one chance to, uh, to prove yourself beyond that. I, I've, been, I've been the nice guy. I've lived to regret it no more. I'm like Don Corleone. I got a business to run. I don't care. Yep. I'm mm -hmm. not here to be your friend or your buddy. You don't mess with me. Oh. Don't tread on me, <laughs> right? Speaking of gangsters, we got Michael G. Cox who has killed a person by buying a website from them. <laughs> I mean, I didn't I know about that. I sent you a note in the chat. Okay, um, to, to, okay, yeah. Anybody else got a, how they? Okay, Ivan, are you tough to on avoid, people? I mean, so this notion of things since like I don't know if it has to do with the pandemic or not. Does people go a bit crazy? Um, like people like really the the amount. Yeah, the, the, the number of no-shows for me at least increased. And I hear the same from other recruiters. What Crazy. we started doing is that we like tell the candidate like, okay, hey, tomorrow you have the interview. Is everything good? On the morning of the interview. Hey, today at 1 p.m. you have the interview. It's all good. And then sometimes even before, hey, in 15 minutes you yes. have the interview. It's all good. And then after the interview, we ask, hey, how was the interview? Like, did everything go okay? Like, and if you like, I mean, in the morning and 15 minutes before, if they don't answer, like I start to panic. Like they will not come like then to the client, right? And we cannot have like a no show if they're like three managers and like the person doesn't appear. This is like catastrophe. So this is how we handle it now at the moment. Just be like really engage and try to catch it before because your client is paying you a lot of money such that they do not come in the situation that your damn candidate doesn't appear, right? You're very so, passionate yeah, and, and about this. And then you have to answer for that as well as if you can control the behavior of another human being. I well, had one can. of these this if, morning. If you engage, you can. You can. If you before engage with them, you can kind of control it and no. catch it. No, you can't. It's a false. No, it's, a, it's a false sense of security. And, and and it's okay to have that, but it's going to hurt when you realize that you can't control another human's behavior. I had one this morning for a sales leadership role, and and the guy just went dark. He hasn't responded to text messages, so he's out. And then I have to have the conversation with the client and, and you, you have to do it in a very diplomatic way, in a, in a very back channel kind of way, because you might be able to save this if that guy pops up again. So I'm taking it, you know, on the chin, basically saying, we kind of set this up kind of late. I apologize. It might have been my fault. And I'm doing that to save the the. The way the candidate is being perceived because Tom says you're wrong. Tom, Tom, what did to teach Michael G. Cox what you would do? Oh, I, I would just like you're out, Chuckles. You, you don't embarrass me like that. See ya. Have a nice life. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, well, Michael I'm, I'm G. Cox, okay when your client, when your client come back to a fifty thousand dollar fee, embarrass me all you want. Why should your client trust you if, if you're if the candidate stiffed them like that? Why would they ever consider uh, him or her again? Yeah, why, because, why I, because I might be able to save that. And I say, hey, Brent, Brent, that was kind of my fault, man. I got back to this guy really late and I haven't heard from them this morning. I'm going to try and do this. Do you yeah, have some you, other times that are available this okay. next week? Despite what you're saying, what is your gut feeling? My gut feeling is that I, I think I can still save it. If my gut feeling was I can't save this, I probably would have reacted very differently. You're looking at it from a different point of view. Tom's saying this guy's a jerk. Why would you want to deal with this person again? You're saying I don't, because I'm it's not I'm... about him. It's about me making a fee. <laughs> exactly. No, it's it's about this, this, this guy's teaching all of us to, to kiss his ass and jump through his hoops, which I'm not doing. I'll go get, get a different candidate. Hey, Tom, buses, would it be any, it it be any different for you if it was, you know, you're an internal you're, you're an internal uh, corporate recruiter. Would it be any different if you were outside? <clears throat> I, that, that's where my bad attitude came from was, was being on, was being a uh, uh, third party independent. I, I well, didn't I, screw I, around. Would it, would it not be easier if you were just a corporate recruiter and just saying, no, screw you, screw you. No, I don't like it. But when you're, when you're doing it actually as an agency recruiter or what have you, or you have somebody else that's on, 
on top of you and you need to make a placement to pay your bills, then it, it's a whole different game. Bernie, it I'll really tell, ask you the same thing. Why should, or Tom, why should the client trust the candidate? I mean, you're passing a, a loser on to them and it's obvious already. They didn't well, show. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've told candidates, you know what? You're out because I am not going to let you hurt my, my client. I work for the client, the, not you. At, at you have point, to sit down. At, at the point where I get to that, and, and Tom, I probably will, at the point that I get to, to feeling like this is not salvageable, screw this guy, I'm not going to tell him anything. But, but I'm not going to waste you, my time on the do guy. You, do you have other candidates for that job? At the moment, no. That's a reason. I, I, I've got well, other what jobs that that I say? Sasha, what do you want to comment? You want in? Well, I agree. I wouldn't reach out to that candidate back again. Definitely not. It's a, Screw you, I mean, candidate. I, I'm, right? I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. The well, the is not talking is to him. At the end of the day, why work with people you can't trust? Exactly. You know, I mean, it's that simple. You exactly. got to save your reputation. I, Boy, we're I'm split on this. Rich, I think this was one of your rules, right? Yeah, I mean, it was Jerry. Jerry had this rule too. Jerry had the rule. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a Jerry rule. That's yeah. the Jerry. The six upon a seven upon him is yeah. rules. We didn't get to them. I had them scheduled. Yeah. Rich, Andy. Rich, could you could you put that in terms of a car example? <laughs> if the car doesn't start the first time, exactly. dump the car. Yeah, I'm not buying. Andy, what's your take on this? If it's a, it's a, as it starts, it's as it goes, baby. If it's a Let's hear from it's Kiev. A Let's hear from Kiev. Kiev. What, what would it, you say? It depends. I, I had uh, 10 truck drivers from uh, the Eastern EU that I hired to Ireland. And uh, four of them, after they bought the tickets, but I had the evidence that they bought the tickets to the employer. Four of them broke their leg, or broke their leg, or broke something on on their body after New Year. So four of them. Sorry. Were they, were they like ten. wrestling four, each other? Four, or something? four out yeah, of ten. Doing? Yeah. So I had to quickly figure out how to uh, how to rearrange everything in order to fill in those. Dang! I wish I'd been at that party where oh, four guys kidding. broke legs. But I mean, but the but question how, is, how, they, you wait, know, wait, they're wait, lying. Wait. It's like their grandmother yeah. died. Okay, well, and they had to go to the funeral. That's his issue. Would you but trust it, those guys again, or would you rule them out of your life? One out of four. One out of four was later hired in uh, the mid of February. I mean, oh, really? Okay. It, well, think Michael about it. I mean, it, it all—it's a numbers game, I guess. It, 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 listen, every day, again, there's nothing that's 100% black and white in this business. But at the end of the day, how many people we all, we've all talked to? I mean, I don't know about you guys. I keep ridiculously good notes. And I've had people tell me their mother has died, their grandmother's died multiple times. You know, <laughs> I used to have that. Yeah, Seriously. I mean, everyone's a liar. The same person. Yeah, Amazing. exactly. You know, it's like their mother's mother, or grandmother, their stepmother's, you know, mother died or really? whatever. People the dog use died. that one, eh? So yeah, I, 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 I had a guy last week, his dog had to get chemo. I'm like, kill the dog, dude. Yeah, that that's happens. what I said. You know, that's what I, I said to the guy. I'm like, dogs I dogs with serious illnesses. What happens? <laughs> hey, pull, let's, tell that on the let, let's do an old yeller right or... behind the ear. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, that's me, Michael. <laughs> but, but correct it's all right it's mean but correct truth brutal truth He's wasting money on chemo for Tom, do you have a final yeah. issue because we're near the end of the show i, I just wanted to, to add it uh, to, to ernie's question no, I, I got my attitude about this when i was independent running my own show and i haven't even carried that into my personal life if a girl wants to postpone a date with me or something i never call her again she's out I'm I a hustler, baby. why <laughs> I don't care. You know, I, I, my time is valuable. My client's time is valuable. Okay. Someone, someone has to stand up for the client because one of the problems in our industry is we're so wound up about the candidate experience and kissing their ass and making them feel loved, wanted, and secure. We need to go back to the days of applicant paid fees. That way there's no more bullshit. Oh. They comply and, and we, we just move on with our day. That's what needs to happen. Applicant paid <laughs> fees is where we should have started this show. <laughs> that would have been a good show. We got to the good, good topic. That's rule number three. One minute to go. Rich Rosen. Hey. Rule number three. Yeah. <laughs> my, 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 uh, my mic isn't working. My mouse isn't really working. I'm just happy to be here. And I thought it was a pretty good show. And, and we got to like, man, like said, we got, That's why I like coming back. We got these people from all over the world. So thank you, everybody, for coming. And That's thank cool. you for uh, watching. You know, I watched now. I, I got these all on YouTube. And it's true. There are no one. <laughs> I'm watching them. 